Hello, hello. Welcome to Musical Mondays. Sale Cassidy. Hey, Grace. Come here. Come here. My pup has come in the room to say hi. Come here. She's a little nervous about my guitar. Hi. You want to say hi, everybody? <laughs> um, hey, Alexandra. Great to see you. Thanks for joining. <laughs> So I'll just give a minute before I start, because uh, I know that Instagram is still notifying people that I'm online. Crazy. <laughs> Grace, did you say hi? Oh, I shouldn't have said your name. Right, so if you want to check out uh, these uh, fabulous Victoria, BC artists, um, Michael Wilford, and his last name is spelled W-I-L-F-O-R-D, and he's a drummer in the band Sale Cassidy, and Sale Cassidy is the project fronted by Colin Cabrillo. Um, great musicians. Check them out. Oh yes, she does know your name, Denise. <laughs> she does indeed. <laughs> so this song is called Rattle My Bones and this is uh, Michael's uh, most, uh, most recent release, I think last month. So check it out. Not sure how well it comes across on the, on the live stream, so let me know. Give me a heart if you're able to hear the song. No hearts. So maybe. There we go. All right, we'll pause that. So welcome. Welcome to Musical Mondays. Great to see you all. Thanks for joining. Um, you know what a great way for me to spend my Monday nights. I always look forward to it. So it, it's great that that you all tune in. And I have some kind of purple thing on the side of my face. It's from my solar system lights. It's making my face look a little weird, but oh well. There it is. Um, yeah, so welcome to Musical Mondays. You know, I think this is, wow, I don't know how many episodes this is, but we're getting close to 40 episodes, I think, of Musical Mondays. Um, yeah, it's been quite the journey with all of you. Um, how was my move? My move happened. It was, uh, it was a lot of work and, and we're here. We've landed. I'm in my yet to be set up musical space, music room. Um, I've got some lights, which is fun, and some little props down below you might not be able to see. So I'm getting there. Um, yeah, I'm totally happy to be in a, in a forever home after being nomadic for a year. Um, hello, the Rad Cyclist, thanks for joining. Um, yeah, and how are you doing with all that crazy flooding? You know, I'm personally doing fine because it uh, didn't affect where we are here on um, this part of Vancouver Island. Other folks in the Lower Mainland and the Fraser Valley um, 
outside of Vancouver were not so lucky. There's been a lot of uh, a lot of loss, especially in agricultural areas and indigenous communities too. I understand. Um, you know, I think how we're feeling it. Well, I'm feeling it is just fear about climate change for sure and anxiety about uh, what's happening and also um, gas shortages. So um, yeah, gas has been pretty hard to get a hold of in Victoria and I hear that that is now happening in the lower mainland too, um, outside of Vancouver. So that's kind of ironic. Um, because this is, you know, gas is a big, uh, gas and oil is a big creator of, of the problems we're having related to the climate, um, or our use of those products. And we all want it right now because uh, there's been a run on, on gas stations in these parts. So that's, uh, yeah, so that's how things are going. And the, Inner Vortex mentioned the Malahat is getting fixed little by little. That's the highway that connects Victoria or the southern part of Vancouver Island to the rest of Vancouver Island. And there was a, a slide there where the, the road was washed out. So that, uh, that is getting fixed little by little. So yeah, but the, you know, there's a provincial state of emergency here and people are being asked not to travel except for um, what's necessary reasons I'm forgetting <laughs> I'm forgetting the phrase um, yeah and I was supposed to be in Vancouver this week for work but uh, uh, but uh, decided not to travel because gas um, is a little uncertain and my and travel definitely wasn't uh, required so my department said stay put stay in Victoria so here I am I'm, I'm here from my home I thought I would be um, live streaming from the road tonight but I'm not um, and the rad cyclist definitely walked and biked more this weekend just to conserve awesome awesome yes I saw some of your your videos that you must have shot uh, from your bicycle which were pretty cool that you posted to your Instagram stories that was neat loved it um, yeah, so, um, tonight I was going to talk a little bit about my new single and I'm keeping an ear open for my puppy to make sure she doesn't get me up to any mischief because my partner is on a call right now too. Yes, essential travel. Thank you. <laughs> the word, uh. The, word, the phrase was escaping my mind. You would think I would know it by now, having it's almost two years that we've been in the pandemic and essential travel or non-essential travel have been phrases that we've probably heard a million times over the last almost two years. So anyway, thanks for helping me with that. Um, yeah, so off the top, I was playing uh, a Michael Wilford song, Rattle My Bones, um, so check that out. And um, tonight I'll talk a little bit about my song Oppenheimer Park. And that's, it's my latest single um, that I released on Friday. And I did a live stream on Friday too, uh, kind of a live stream single release party, which was totally fun and premiered the lyric video. But uh, this song is actually one that I wrote uh, quite a number of years ago, and it um, started out as a, a bunch of scribbled verses in one of my writing books that I carried in my backpack on the bus on my commute to work. Um, and this was, I was living in Vancouver at the time and I was working at UBC, uh, the University of British Columbia, and I was commuting quite a long way um, from East Vancouver, which is uh, mostly, or was at that time, a mostly working class neighborhood and some very poor regions. Um, and I was, my bus would snake through the kind of entire city from east to west, and I would end up in the very privileged um, west side of Vancouver where the university is. 
Um, and so I had lots of time to think and reflect and observe my city and just kind of the disparities uh, of wealth in the city, um, especially in Vancouver's uh, downtown east side neighborhood, um, which is the east side of downtown that uh, at that time that my bus traveled through. And it's a very poor neighborhood. Um, it has been known as the poorest postal code in Canada. And it's a very, uh, it's a neighborhood with a lot of complex social issues and also a lot of life and vibrancy. Um, there's a large urban indigenous population in the neighborhood. There's a lot of homelessness, there's a lot of survival sex trade work and a lot of drug use. Um, and uh, years later, um, after I'd done some scribblings in that notebook and written parts of this song, I uh, volunteered at an organization called WISH, which is a, um, a center and a service for women who work in the survival sex trade in Vancouver's downtown east side. And I volunteered there for a couple of years and I had the opportunity to work with and work alongside with a lot of women in the neighborhood because uh, there were a number of women in the neighborhood who lived in the neighborhood who were employed at the center or who volunteered themselves. So I got to know uh, quite a few of them through working with them and just um, uh, different people using the services at the at the center. So um, yeah, it was quite it was. Um, quite a learning experience for me and it really started me, I would say, on my journey to learn about, um, more about colonization in Canada as a, as a colonizing state and uh, about uh, the residential school system and the cultural and physical genocide of the indigenous people in our country. So uh, there's a lot packed into this song um, and a lot about my experiences. Um, so, um, yeah, so let me know if you have questions as I'm chatting through. I'll, I'll sing little bits of the song. I probably won't perform the whole thing tonight. It's about a six minute song. <laughs> Not really the right length for a popular song, but there you go. It's, uh, it's what worked for me. So the song's made up of, uh, one, let me just look here. One, two three kind of four verses and choruses and it kind of uh, is a collection of of images and kind of reflected images of of those bus trips and um um and the chorus it has four repeated lines so i'll give you an example i'll just i'll just read um the lyrics to the first verse and then i'll, I'll sing the first verse Sleep, fair city, in silent smog, he came on a white horse strong, black plowman at his side. At his side we beg for peace and blind wisdom. Oh, take our hands, white man, lead us to slumber. Oh, sleep, little children, in lies impassioned. We are warm with hatred and justice for all. And then the first chorus goes, at night ask the questions, the morning will obscure in those moments when yourself will crumble for sure. So it's definitely a song of inquiry and it's, uh, you know, the, the author, I guess, being myself or the character in the song is really is looking at themselves in those moments, in those kind of those moments where you're kind of stripped bare and you're, you're looking at your own identity and who you are and the impact of, of, of the impact you have in the world or the impact that person has in the world. So I'll just sing a little bit of it. Thank you. 
while I was doing that. I appreciate that. So, yeah, so there's the first verse um, and the first chorus. And, you know, it's mostly just me and my voice and my guitar at that point in the song. Um, you know, and I really wrote this song as a kind of the classic protest uh, singer-songwriter style. So I I really embody that in, in that part of the song before the before the full band comes in. A um, couple of other things I'll tell you about the song. Two is I'm only playing two chords through the whole song. I'm playing an E major chord and this funky suspended chord. And it's just that through the whole song. talked about my strumming and picking style I talked a little bit about the guitar picks I use so I use these kind of they're big and they have a lot of surface area here on each side for strumming so I can get this wappy sound so in this for especially the quieter parts of this song I'm strumming with this part of the pick rather than the point so I get this kind of softer wappy sound on the song when it gets more intense I just kind of flip my pick around and it really changes the sound becomes more assertive less thoughtful and tentative and the other thing is I'm playing this I don't know whether you can see my strumming hand but my hand is actually moving more than more times than, sorry, I'm not very good at singing and playing at the same time. I mean, talking and playing at the same time. Um, but my hand is moving more than I'm strumming. So I'm kind of tapping out the beat with my strumming hand without playing each beat. And then later on in the song, when I flipped the pick around, and when the the intensity of the sound, I want more intensity of sound. week I was talking about picks so this is the pick I usually use it's by Fender and it's a thin because I like the flap sound and these are your standard does that show up very well these are the standard shape picks that I think a lot of people use I've never used these well I have but I really don't like them they're too small for me I like the it's not that I have big hands I just like I like the contact, I like the tactileness of holding something that re it really, you know, it, it's, I know it's in my hand. Um, so, uh, 
Yeah, so that's a little bit about the song. What else can I tell you? Right, so I talked about, you know, the kind of classic singer-songwriter style that the song is in. Um, uh, if you listen to the recorded version, and you can check it out on either my Bandcamp or Spotify or Apple Music, whatever platform you prefer to listen on, it's on all of them. Um, you can hear uh, at that point where the band, when I say the band comes in, it becomes this big, big, big sound, um, which I so appreciate. And, and the guys in my band, they kind of, they, they kind of uh, took the, took it to a, a, another place. Um, so I'm, I mentioned I'm just playing these two chords through the song and they just layer this lovely arrangement on top of it where they're playing harmony chords to what I'm playing. So have a listen for that when you're listening. Um, yeah. Thank you, Inner Vortex. It's really an awesome sound. I appreciate that. Yeah, I love the sound of this pick. It's something that uh, I do... I use quite a bit or have that kind of using the the long side of the pick, just to give some variation. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think that's that's what I wanted to share tonight about Oppenheimer Park. Um, so check it out. Uh, give it a listen. Give it some streams. If you like it, maybe post about it on social media. I would love that. And tag me. I would so appreciate that. If you're all, if you're a listener on Spotify, give it one of those little green hearts because that helps uh, that helps the algorithms um, know that people are liking the song and might uh, help me get a wider audience, which is great. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna sign off for the night. Thanks so much for tuning in. And again, um, just a, a shout out to the song that was at the beginning, if you want to check that out as well. It was Rattle My Bones by Michael Wilford. Um, lead, uh, the lead vocals in that song done by Colin Creverio from Sale Cassidy. So check that out. And until next week, I hope you find people keep well. And uh, great to see you tonight. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you next week. All right. Bye. Take care.